Well, grace to you and peace from our God and Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, dear friends, as much as God loves you, I have bad news. See, God loved us so much that he carefully crafted the world, didn't he? In fact, we're told in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, through Christ all things were made. Uh, without Christ there was nothing made that has been made. The Bible also says, you know, God knit us together in our mother's womb, right? You have that, that uh, you know, kind of a wonderful word picture, don't you? Maybe remember your, your mom, your uh, grandmother, patiently uh, knitting uh, something that would be useful uh, to the family. Uh, you know, maybe you have a blanket that was, was knitted by your grandmother, still in, in storage somewhere. Or, you know, you, you had your, your mittens, your, your scarf that a granny made for you when you were 10, and, and you still, you know, keep them in your treasure chest to this day. And that God loved us so much, he made all things good, the Bible says. Right? Everything was functioning according to his plan. When Adam and Eve were created, we're told that there was a nice mist that would go up from the ground in, in the morning, and then it would kind of just kind of fall on the crops in the afternoon. They, they didn't have to worry about irrigation. They, they didn't have to worry about watering the plants. You know, they, they basically could take it easy. Right, we talk about the Garden of Eden as that a blessed, a special place. Uh, they had innocence about them, right? They did not know evil. They didn't know what that was. They had, had no clue, right? You know, just like perhaps when you remember you're raising your, your little guys and gals and you think back to that time, you know, when they seemed innocent as well. Having been baptized on, you know, probably the first week of their life, right? They carried uh, that honor of the Lord uh, within them. They hadn't watched any terrible TV programs. They hadn't been exposed to any of the bad things in the world, right? And that is what the world was like. But unfortunately, right? Eve was tempted by Satan. And of course, that, that's the bad news, isn't it? You know, God gave to Adam and Eve the entire world. He said, you know, be, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. He said, have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature. Right? The world is yours. This beautiful, precious world place that I have carefully crafted and designed, it belongs to you. And when Eve fell into sin, what she basically said was, I, I, I don't think I, I can handle this responsibility. And, you know, maybe, maybe I'll like for you know, Satan to be my advisor. I kind of like to, you know, bring him onto my management team, you know. Uh, I give him a, a special place, and he can advise me because, you know, it, it, it seems like what, what he's telling me is, uh, is, you know, inside information, right? The, the Lord God, you know, he, he's kind of a jealous guy. He doesn't really want you to know all of the stuff that he knows. You know, he, he, he kind of likes, you know, to, you know, he's, he's like way up here and, and you're just like the little minions, you know, down here, you know. And, and if you will but eat of the tree of knowledge, you can be as smart as he is. You will know both good and evil. And so Eve fell into the sin. 
Of course, Adam followed, didn't he? It, it, it's kind of interesting, but the, the Bible uh, tells us that, that Eve, you know, being caught in, in deception, she, she didn't really know what she was doing. That's what the Bible says. But Adam, we're told, he, he fully knew what was going on. But a little bit of the, the backstory, right? You know, God is looking at Adam and Adam is naming all the various animals and God says it is not good for him to be alone. Right? Adam was pretty lonely. <clears throat> Until God came and fashioned Eve for him. And so now Adam is pretty happy. You know, he has a, a, a nice wife and, you know, he has some of the other than, you know, the animal pets that, that he has around. He has someone special for him. And now she's kind of going astray. Right now, now she's taking a bite of the apple. Right? You know, she, she's, you know, going off the cliff. And Adam says within himself, I don't want to lose her. I, I need her. And so he takes a bite of the apple as well. Eve being deceived. Right? Adam knowing full well what, what he was doing. God said, don't do it. I'm afraid of losing Eve. Right? She, she's did it. I, I, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Right? And of course we know the rest of the story, don't we? Our, our real present age. The way that our world is today. That fall into sin was the first great catastrophe, in fact, that took over the earth, wasn't it? Because everything changed. That, that, that's the bad news, isn't it? Right, the, the Lord God, he, he, you know, of course he knows the, what Adam and Eve have done, but he comes in, into the, the garden and, and maybe kind of like you did with your own children at, at times, you know, you, you, you come home and you know that something has gone wrong, right? You, you could sense it, you could feel it, you could see uh, by the state of the yard, you know, when you drove in, right? Something has gone wrong and, and so you, you called out and you say, ahem! You know, uh, 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 Stevie, Johnny, where are you? See, you maybe saw they're hiding behind that tree over there, but you know, you, you, you called out, you know, just for effect, and that's kind of what God is, is doing here. Um, you know, where, 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 where are you? Right? No, we're, 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 we're hiding. Right? Well, well, why? Oh, why is it that you're hiding? You, you said to Stevie and Johnny, you know, why, why, why are you hiding out there in the trees? Come on, right? come on out. Okay. Well, it's because we have done wrong. Okay. And you, you wanted Stevie and Johnny to confess, you know, what, what they had done, and you know you're prying into their business a little bit, right, as a good parent would. And you, you know, you kind of, step by step, you get the story out of them. Well, well, what is it that you did? Well, okay. And then you laid down the consequences, didn't you? Now, you know, theologically, we, we could, you know, debate, you know, is, is it God that, you know, then created the consequences, or is God just kind of acting like the police officer that comes and says, okay, here is what the punishment is going to be according to the, the crime? Um, yeah, you know, it really could go either way, couldn't it? But nevertheless, you know, God comes and he says, you know, now here's what's going to happen. Okay. By the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to earn your way. Now, there's no longer going to be this nice mist that just kind of goes up and floats around and comes down and waters the crops in the afternoon. You're going to have to work for it now. There's going to be obstacles that you're going to have to overcome. And in fact, the very fabric of the earth has changed and now there's going to be weeds. There's going to be thistles, there's going to be thorns that you're going to have to fight against. We're no longer going to have this kind of, you know, peaceful, 
you know, existing, but now you're going to have to work for it. Another thing that God comes in and he says, you know what, now you, you lost your innocence. We're told that the Lord God, he makes the first sacrifice there in the Garden of Eden in order to provide clothing for Adam and Eve. He makes the clothing from animal skin. Right? Things have gone wrong. And there's going to be some problems here. And the mosquitoes are going to come and bite you at times. You're, you're going to have to work. Things have changed. It's the bad news, isn't it? Or that there's going to be that kind of a struggle. But throughout all of history, as we trace down through time in our Old Testament, we find that God has decided he wants to do something new. And see, that, that new thing is that God himself is going to provide a sacrifice. And, and yeah, just as kind of a, a, a small example there in the Garden of Eden that he sacrificed animals to make the clothing because the innocence was lost right now he's going to make a, a much larger sacrifice in order that you and i can be saved but unfortunately that news it doesn't change where we live and it doesn't change our present circumstance we're still in the fallen world, aren't we? In our New Testament lesson for today, the author James, he comes and he tells us, you know, guess what? When bad things happen, don't blame God for those. When temptations come, don't go out there and say, oh, I, I was tempted by God, because God doesn't tempt anyone. Who are we tempted by? We're tempted by Satan, aren't we? And when bad things happen to us, it is the devil's work. And he's freely able to go about seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said that himself, right? He's like a roaring lion. He's free out there. Right? He can hurt, he can injure, right? he can cause catastrophes, he can make disasters. Uh, a lot of times you, you and I, though, we maybe attribute those to God, don't we? Right? we? We still do it all the time. Insurance companies do it all the time, right? Uh, we was in a, a vacancy over in North Dakota at a, a, at a time and the, the basement of the church got flooded. And the insurance adjuster came in and said, it was an act of God. I was like, I mean, excuse me. No, the, the Lord God decided that this church was so terrible that the basement needed to be flooded, right? Is that, is that what happened? But that's what we're kind of used to dealing with, aren't we? But in the scripture for today, right, it comes and tells us, you know, don't expect that God is doing bad things, right? When, when you get tempted, don't go and say, well, God is tempting me. God, God doesn't tempt people. But he is making a new way. Because you, you, you might right away say, well, yeah, well, what about Abraham? In our text for today, right? Did it not seem that God was no, tempting Abraham. But no, the fact of the matter is that God was making a new plan. When we think about it, if we live in a world, right, where Satan has his way, where he can basically do what, whatever he wants to do, what options do you and I have? 
And so, so there, there I am, right? And, and I'm trying to work out, you know, how to go about my life. And I, I'm, I'm wondering, what can I do? And I, maybe I say to myself, the best I can do is just stay out of Satan's lap. I'll, I'll just kind of be timid and I'll just kind of hang back and you know, I'll just maybe stay at home quite a lot. And if I, I'm not out there, you know, maybe Satan can't see me and I will be okay. But, you know, that's maybe an option. That is maybe something we, we would think about. But what, what is a, a, another option that many people in the ancient world, especially, you know, uh, took uh, to themselves, it was a, that they would worship the evil one, right? And so what, what do I need to do for Satan to be pleased with me while well, we find the people offering their children as a sacrifice? Now, I, I pointed out several months ago, the ancient historian, you know, writing about the difference between Christians and, and you know, atheists, and that he, he himself being an atheist, he, he said, you know what, that the, the Christians love their children. As if that, that was some new concept. And, you know, he, he talked about how, you know, we, we pagans, if we don't want our, our children, we just kind of leave them out in the trash pile. You know, we, we just let nature take its course. Or, you know, we have the argument, oh, you know, that we wouldn't want that child to be raised in a home where he's not loved. So it's better for him to die. See? And, and so in order to please Satan, they would bring their children and offer them as sacrifices. We, we want the crops to be able to grow this year. Hey, who, who out there is, you know, going to sacrifice their newborn? And some people would come forward and do it. Oh, you know, for the sake of the community. I didn't really want that kid anyway. And so people throughout the, the world, especially in the ancient times, you know, are, are practicing, you know, these uh, kinds of, of works in order to try to gain the Satan's approval. Right? If I can just, you know, get Satan to not be uh, upset with me, if I can just kind of get the devil to, you know, kind of uh, not mess in my home, then it will be okay. Right? That, that's an option that, that people took. And so in the ancient world, especially at the time of Abraham, you know, people were used to sacrificing their children. And, and yet you, you and I know, right, God is going to do something new. But for Abraham... Right, familiar with the child sacrifice, you know, there, there he is, and, and suddenly, he, you know, here's the, the voice of, of God, and, you know, I, I, you know, Abraham, I want you to, you know, bring your son, your only son, I want you to take him out there and sacrifice him, and, and Abraham maybe is, is thinking to himself, well, this is how things are. I, I know a lot of my neighbors that have done stuff like that, and, you know, if that's what God wants uh, from me, you know, here I go. And, and maybe even a, a credit to Abraham, we're told he got up early. Right? He didn't say, well, okay, you know, I'll, I'll think about it for the next month. <laughs> or this is a, a good day to sleep in and kind of drag my feet. No, Abraham gets up early. Right? He, you know, I want to please God. I want to be doing what God has told me to do uh, again, you and I know what's going on behind the scenes, but you know Abraham, he he maybe didn't know at the time, and still he's following through. But our God, who wants to do something new, right, brings Abraham and Isaac up to the top of the mountain, and then reveals the next. Step. But Abraham, you can't do it. Even if you would sacrifice your son, it would not make a difference. 
because I have to do it. God is demonstrating that the sacrifice must come from Him. That any sacrifices that we make, they're, they're not effective. They're not going to make the, the crop somehow grow better. They're not really going to you know, make the, the moon shine on the right night so that I can have a, the omen, the sign that my life is going to turn around. Right? Nothing that I do is going to matter. We need God to do something. And, and God does. They're on the mountaintop. God provides a substitute. Right? God says, you know what? This is the way you've been doing it. Right? The, the ending result is the death of, of the son that you love so very much in order that somehow you can feel like you've made your contribution. You can feel like you have done your utmost to secure God's pardon. And guess what? It doesn't work. Right? We need something else. We need God to make the sacrifice. In Abraham's situation, God provides a ram caught in the thicket. Right? Here is the sacrifice. Here is the, the substitute. Here is what you can now use. And yes, you know, through the, New, the Old Testament, through the, the Jewish culture, that animal sacrifice became kind of the prominent way that the Jewish people could come back to God, right? that they could you know, demonstrate that they were repenting, they understood the magnitude of their sin. Right? There's a visual symbol uh, of, you know, that I am forgiven. But have you, have you ever thought about what a, a, a mess that would kind of be? You know, if, if here, here I am and, and all of you, you know, whatever your sin was this week, you had to bring in a, a, a suitable animal, you know. And, 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 and there's Mary and then, you know, she had a, a, a stray thought and so, you know, she brings in a, a, a couple pigeons or a couple doves or, or something like that and says, you know, you know, pastor, I... You know, on Tuesday in the afternoon, I kind of got irritated and, and I was a little bit, a little bit cross. And here's, here's my pigeon, you know. And, 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 and then, you know, Bob comes in and, and, you know, he's got a yoke of oxen, right? And he's saying, oh, pastor, man, this was a bad weekend. You know, here's my, my, my yoke of oxen I have to bring in and, and, and sacrifice and, and you know here here I'm up here with you with my blades you know and I'm you know slaughtering this and you know cutting that and 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 the people in in Israel they actually wanted to get some of the blood on them during the worship service because that symbolized that the blood of their sacrifice had had touched them. Right, so not only am I slaughtering things up here, but you know, I'm blood here and there, and, and you know, you're up here in the front pews because you want to get, get some of that on you as a, a sign that you have been you know, redeemed. Right? And, and that's how their system was. But God made a new way once again, didn't he? He sent Jesus to become the final sacrifice. You see, when Jesus Christ died upon the cross, it, it opened the way to heaven right, for, for all of us. It, it, it made it so that you and I no longer have to try to sacrifice because we can depend that Jesus was perfect. Right? Jesus Christ did it all. I no longer have to worry about paying uh, my way. I, I don't have to pay it back somehow. I, I don't have to go through life never smiling again because of that thing I did, you know, 10 years ago. I can be forgiven. I, I, I can be renewed. I can be restored once again. 
God made a new way. Yes, in this world we will have trouble, says the Lord. In this world, you know, it's interesting that the devil is referred to as the prince of the powers of the air. Right? He, he controls the weather patterns at times. He can bring catastrophes upon people. Right? He can create terrible destruction. Uh, just kind of a, a, a stray thought, um, you know, when the, the, the pilgrims, you know, came over and they had all their trials and, and, and tribulations and they began to interact with the Native American people, of course, you know, they're uh, around Plymouth, uh, Massachusetts, and the, the Native Americans um, observed that through a time of crisis, the, the pilgrims were continually praying for rain that their crops might be preserved. And then the, the Native Americans, they also noticed that their prayer was granted. And, and the pilgrims through their prayer um, had a, a soft drizzling rain that came down uh, upon their crops. And, and we, we know through history, as they're, they're interacting with the, the pilgrims, they, they you know, said, you know what, when, when we pray for rain, right, we're, we're dancing around, you know, we're cutting ourselves and we're offering blood sacrifices and, you know, we're, we're doing all of these things and it, it seems that our prayers are in fact effective, but the rain that we get is often, you know, hard and sometimes it knocks down the crops and sometimes it's accompanied by hail and we have terrible winds. And when you pray to your God for rain, you get this soft drizzle that nourishes your crops and it doesn't damage anything, right? There is a difference that, that we have seen and, and dear friends, that is the difference that we're talking about here today, isn't it? It's a difference that changes people's hearts. It's a difference that, that makes a way, uh, a measured um, factor in people's lives, doesn't it? Right, that Jesus Christ as our Savior you know, maybe we don't get spared from the flood. And, you know, maybe there are uh, times when the, the prince of the powers of the air has been able to, you know, damage our, our homes uh, and our crops. And, you know, maybe there is still going to be some difficulties to overcome in this world simply because there's thorns and, and thistles and you got to work for it now. But we have a promise, don't we? We're going to get to go home. We're going to get to be with God for all eternity. We have somebody here that we can depend upon. Somebody that can bring the soft drizzly rain just when we need it. Somebody that we can go to when we suffer loss. Someone who, whose shoulder we can cry on and we know that he will comfort us with the comfort that we ourselves have received. That we can go through those times of trial and then we can tell others about the one who walked with us through those trying times that we can experience temptations and not blame our God, right? that we can understand it is the devil who comes and tempts us, it is the evil one who comes and wants to ruin our lives, right? It, it's, you know, the, the Satan himself that made me trip and fall down the stairs, 
It wasn't somehow that God had this master plan that if I, I, I broke my hip and I was in the hospital, I would develop more perseverance and my faith would increase and there would be all of these things. No, it's not like that. My God tempts no one. My God doesn't do mean things to people. He's the one we can turn to. And he is the one who can take us through it. He's the, the one that can miraculously heal us at times. And he's the one that can hold us in his arms. When we're broken, when we're shattered, when we don't know if we can go on. He supports us and strengthens us and reminds us we are his, the apple of his eye, the one that he loves so much. That he sent Jesus to make a way to die so that we can live. Amen. Amen. I may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be in your hearts and minds and now and always. Amen. <laughs>